Here in this Debaco University video, we're going to be looking at vapor pressure de deficit and how it relates to cannabis plants. All right, let's get into how vapor pressure deficit impacts cannabis plants. Well, first off, it's typically abbreviated VPD, and it will be throughout this presentation. And this is an advanced method for understanding and measuring the indoor or technically outdoor growing environment. For outdoor, it's more used for monitoring, and for indoors, it can you can calculate the VPD and then make changes to your growing conditions. This does require more equipment to gather information and an understanding of the overall growing environment, which is why this is considered to be a more advanced technique. We also have the vapor pressure of the air to take into consideration, the leaf vapor pressure, and together these in combination or information being used to get the VPD, the vapor pressure to deficit between those two. Now the equipment that you need, you need a thermometer because you need to have an idea of what the air temperature is. You also need a hygrometer, which is basically measuring the humidity in the area. And an uh, infrared IR thermometer that, cause that is going to be used to provide the temperature of the leaf. With the data generated, you can calculate the VPD of the growing space. So keep in mind that the VPD does take into account the entire environment. This allows a consistent measure that takes into account three main variables within any given grow space. So when we're looking at the influences on VPD, one is transpiration. As VPD increases, the plant is going to transpire at a greater rate. It's going to move water through its material at a um, greater rate. The stomata opening, as VPD increases, the stomata get smaller or basically start to close up. For carbon dioxide uptake, as VPD increases, the stomata get smaller, and that's going to reduce or restrict carbon dioxide uptake because those stomata are pores in the underside of the leaves, allowing for gas exchange. And when they're smaller or get closed up, we cannot have as much carbon dioxide being taken into the plant. And then nutrient intake at the root level, increasing VPD and transpiration rates will mean the roots will pull more nutrients, which can be important. And plant stress, increasing VPD will increase the plant stress as well. Now this is a great kind of summary chart here. Um, it's cited in the description, so if you want to go through and find the original source, you're more than welcome to. But you're also encouraged to kind of take a screenshot of this, pause the video here, and do a little comparison. Look at the temperature of the area, and um, here we have degrees Fahrenheit, and here's the relative humidity of the growing space. You can kind of see where those match up. And of course, your goal is to be in this nice dark region, dark green region right here. Now the vapor pressure, uh, looking at conversion factors because different um, meters read in different units, it's important to know or be able to compare two different sources. So the most common unit of measure is kilopascals or KPA, however inches of mercury or IN of HG is also used. Here are the following conversion factors. We can see if you have KPA, in, uh, to get KPA from inches of mercury, you multiply whatever reading you get in inches of mercury by 3.386. And if you have KPA and want to get to inches of mercury, you take your KPA reading and multiply it by 0 0.296 to get your inches of mercury. If you're looking at hectopascals, we see the conversion down here at the bottom. Now, some suggested target levels of uh, this uh, VPD by growth phase. Typically, as the plants get older, we want to increase the VPD. Propagation or early veg, and again, just general targets to shoot for, 0.2 to 0.8 KPAs. For late veg and early flower, looking at 0.8 to 1.4 KPA. For mid flower to late flower, 1.2 to 1.5 KPA. And again, here's some other suggestions, and these are a great way to have that target level set, at least initially, as you're looking at different phases of your cannabis plants. How does the environment impact the VPD? Now, as you increase the temperature, so does the VPD, and inversely, as you decrease the temperature, so does the VPD. Those are directly correlated. However, humidity, as you increase humidity, you will decrease VPD. So those are inversely relation, uh, inverse relationship. Uh, simply, as you decrease humidity, you will also increase VPD, in that inverse relationship there. As you increase the light intensity, you're increasing the light temps, which will also, um, sorry, increase the light intensity. This will increase the temperature of the leaf, as that light is impacting the leaf there. And with that increase in leaf temperature, that will also increase your VPD. Decreasing the light intensity decreases leaf temps and then decreases VPD. So just to give you an idea how these three environments will impact this. 
Now, relative humidity at given temperatures. So suggested values are required to maintain ideal growing conditions. This is when the lights are on. So this, again, gives you kind of a Fahrenheit and Celsius temperature uh, and kind of that humidity there and looking at that target ranges there for those VPDs as expressed earlier. Again, sources in the description there if you want to look at this. But again, it gives you a good kind of general target range to be aiming for. Now, transpiration, it was talked about, this is movement of water in the plants. Water first enters the roots of the plant and will travel through the plant and exit out small regulated pores called the stomata. This general movement of water is called transpiration and it allows for nutrients to move through the plant and also is a method of cooling the plant. Most of the plant's water that's uptake is used for cooling. The humidity is considered to be around 100% inside the leaf, and this represents saturated vapor pressure. So here we see, you know, root, um, roots in the ground, water being absorbed mainly by the xylem, uh, moving its way up through the plant and coming out the leaves there. Now, transpiration, the details of transpiration may be more details than you care to know. Uh, but here we're looking at the kind of properties of water, the hydrogen bonding of water, the adhesive and cohesive properties of water, allowing them to kind of like work their way up uh, the um, stem here. So this is kind of the within the xylem vesicle. From there's xylem, there's also phloem. Phloem is more of the minerals and nutrients, and phloem can move up and down the plant. Xylem is basically going from what's called the roots up to the shoots. And you see, we see here that getting in the intermolecular forces, the partial positive, partial negatives, kind of linking of these water molecules together, helping this move its way up through the plant. So a little kind of uh, plant biology there for you. Then those transpiration rates. Well, transpiration rates will be faster in hot and dry conditions. Rates will slow in high humidity uh, because water has no place to evaporate to. So when it's hot and it's kind of you're sticky, that's because you're evaporating. You're tr trying to evaporate to cool yourself. But there's so much moisture in the air, you kind of have that sticky feeling, that high humidity conditions. The stomata need to be regulated because when they're open, they can let CO2 in for the photosynthetic process, which is great. But at the same time, the plant is also losing water, so it has to make sure it's adequately hydrated. Plants need to balance out the ability to photosynthesize and also remain hydrated. General conditions here, we can see the rate of transpiration increases with temperature to a certain point and then will plateau. So even though the temperature is increasing, that kind of rate of transpiration is kind of flatlined there. Wind velocity, for those that have a fan on their plants or growing in the outdoor environment, typically as the wind velocity increases, so will the transpiration rate. Now the humidity, as our humidity increases, our rate of transpiration will decrease simply because the water within the leaf has nowhere to evaporate to. And if the water has nowhere to evaporate to, it's no point for the plant can take in more water, move it up through the xylem, move it up through the stem. Therefore, the increased humidity, not allowing water to escape out the stomata, will decrease those transpiration rates. So hopefully this helps you better understand the VPD and allows you to maximize the growing conditions of your cannabis plants.